You know, my nick my nickname is One Take Jake, so I do things in one take because well, I, have, I have experience. Right. One weekend, how, how's it looking so far? I mean, it's it's so far just the energy that both sides of the ball, you know, all three phases because we're doing a lot of stuff in the special team space. Um, Coach Gonzalez has it real organized and, you know, to go against Coach Aquina's defensive staff and just the scheme that he's putting in, it challenges us on offense, but when you have – quarterback like Noah and then some of the skilled players, T-Mac, our O-line, you know, all those guys returning. It's just been great being able to get out there as a unit. Uh, coach Ogles will be our line coach, which I've been with the past four years at San Jose. He's brought a real good detailed energy to an already experienced group. And, you know, they're putting in a lot of good work together and getting some chemistry with the wideouts and then the running backs. You know, we're trying to make sure we do our part, but it's been good and it's been fun so far. Uh, the position being more wide open maybe than some others because of there's only one guy here who played here last year. Mm -hmm. Does uh, bringing in a guy like Quali with you, does that give him a leg up on the other ones because he already knows what to expect from you? Well, first of all, he didn't come with me. He went in the portal, then he came. So I want to make sure we get that straight. But uh, having him knowing how I teach is really important. But he had to learn the verbiage in the playbook just like everybody else because we didn't carry over. We may have carried over 20% of the verbiage. We've changed 80% of our verbiage to fit the team. So it wasn't just about it fitting him. We didn't bring San Jose State verbiage with us. You know, we, we made sure that it fit. They had a real good team last year. They won 10 games. So how much do you need to change? How much do you need to mesh? But him knowing how I work, is really important because he's in the meetings. He's not only with me, he's with Coach Oglesby, our O-line coach. He's in there with Coach Babers and Coach Lau, the quarterbacks, meeting with them, understanding the whole offense. So he's just a detailed worker, and he brought that work ethic with him because that's how detailed that I like for them to be. I don't want them just to know what they have. I want them to know what the entire concept is on every play. You're going to see a lot of pointing and pre-snap reading and a lot of talking. He's bringing that to the table, and I think it's rubbing off on Rayshon and, and Brandon and the other guys. From the time that you recruited him to San Jose State till now, what stands out to you about his improvements as running back? Just his leadership. You know, he's uh, he's always been talented. You know, he was even when he was at you know Utah Tech, he was an All Conference player there. And then last year, him and Kyrie being in the top ten in the country as far as yards per carry averaging six yards a carry, being very unselfish, close to 900 yards rushing and just understanding what that role was and then being groomed to be that number one guy, but also being a leader and a, and a great teammate. You know, he's used to that because he had to share last year with Kyrie and he's been great with Rayshon and we're looking forward to Ja'Cory coming in May as well. So his leadership and just understanding how to work, how to take care of yourself on and off the field, He's off to a great start in school. He's up to a 4.0 already. Got all A's since he's been here. He's an honor roll student coming from San Jose. So he just knows how to work, and he makes my job easy. You know, when I have things that I want to relay to them as far as details, I can have him do it. I don't have to be in there. So he's he's one of them young men that you can kind of count on. He's very mature, not a big talker. He's one of – but I tell him you don't lead – by yourself, you lead by bringing people with you, and that's one of the things he's done. I believe uh, Speedy uh, had San Jose State as a finalist for yeah. his recruitment. Yeah. Uh, so you guys have a connection that goes way back. How has how's that been, and, and how do you um, envision his role? It's, it's ironic because if you watched the Army All-American game, he had the Arizona hat, the San Jose State hat, and the Louisville hat. And we actually thought we had him. You know, he was very – Number one recruit on my board at that time. Had an opportunity to recruit him out of St. John Bosco. He was a 10-3 sprinter. So everything about him, I knew his strengths and weaknesses and was looking forward to working with him. So here it is. You fast forward two years later, I'm able to still do that. I think he can be a major part of what we're doing in our offense, just improving, getting his weight up, getting stronger, improving and catching the football as well. And then being huge in the special team space. I think that's that's a challenge I have for him. There's so many ways you can affect the football game. It's not just by 
running or catching the ball. You can change the game in special team space as well as being a very good change of pace running back, a third down back, which means you're going to have to know how to pre-snap, read, block, protect. We have one of the best quarterbacks in the country, so he needs to be able to count on you that you're able to ID and protect things. So I'm going to find ways to get him on that football field because he's a very dynamic player. He's real humble. He's a great teammate, and he's one of our returners, and I just want to see him shine because he's earned the opportunity to do that. Blocking, on, you talked about blocking, and today was full pads. Mm -hmm. What did you see out of your group today, uh, being able to go up against those linebackers and really have some contact there? Well, it was the effort piece is what I was worried about. I told them, you know, when we don't cut each other. You know, we try to stay up high, which is going to give the advantage to the defensive players. And we have a very good physical group of linebackers that, that play real hard, especially at number five. You know, you better be on your A game. But the biggest thing for us is – is the technique right? I don't I don't worry about the win or lose the rep. You know, are you properly using the technique when you're when you are blocking? Because I got a big old sign in my room and it says no block, no rock. So if you don't block and you don't protect, you're not gonna play. So that's something that we really, really emphasize. It's part of my indie. If you looked at one-on-ones when everybody else was running routes against each other, we were doing one-on-one -on -one blocking against the linebackers. That's something that I really put a heavy emphasis on, and I think they're buying into it, and they're competitive, and we're going to continue to do it. Every time you see us doing one-on-ones, you will see us down there blocking because I want them to be able to master that. I noticed that you were doing some, some ball security in neutrals as well. How much do you emphasize ball security? Oh, that's number one. Coach Brennan, that's number one. That's a big thing. In 2020, we was number one in the country. We had zero fumbles on the season. was the only team, you know, tied for first in the country in that area. And 21 and 22, if you look at the track record where we came from, we've, all, we've always been in the top three in the country as far as having not losing fumbles and making sure that that's something that we emphasize. Uh, Coach Brennan is a really, really big – when it comes to that space, that's one of the big emphasis. Myself and Coach Matt Atkins, which is our tight end coach, we're responsible every day to come up with a different type of ball security drill. And um, it's a team effort, though. All the coaches buy in. You know, we we make sure that that ball is chin high and tight. We have our own little language that we use for that, but it's something that we're going to bring with us from where we were to over here. I don't even know what the numbers were last year as far as lost balls or lost fumbles. We're just going to make sure that's something that you see every day. It's going to be a premium, especially in the running back room. That's going to be something you're going to hear me. If you want to hear me yell, you, you see a ball on that ground. That's when you really see me. But we really, really take pride in making sure that we take care of the football. Are the days of the, the 30 carry per game guy mm -hmm. that you need to mix it up? Mm -hmm. is, is that just not a thing anymore? Well, the having three guys that you split it with. Well, it's just the wear and tear. I think a lot of people don't understand. They, they've devalued the running back, which is which is mind blowing to me because they're the only person every play there's something going on physically. Whether they're running the ball, getting tackled, whether they're running a route, getting tackled, <laughs> whether they are blocking a two hundred thirty forty pound linebacker exerting their bodies, or whether they're just whether it be catching a screen play and taking it, you know, for a touchdown. Anything they're doing physically is something involved with them, and they have to know not only the run game, they got to be able to know everything in the concept and as far as the pass game is concerned. They got to be able to protect the quarterback. They got to be able to ID with all this fire zones and corner cats and all that stuff going on now in football. They got to be able to know that stuff, and that's something – that in my background, I've been, you know, I've coached on both sides of the ball. So that's one of the first things we do. My teachings is making sure that they understand the entire defense and, and what we have, not just from the running back perspective, but what everybody has. So we have a great staff and um, we love doing things together. You'll see us spend a lot of time with the offensive line because we want to speak their language and understand what we're doing. Um, Ja'Cory still at New Mexico. Are you allowed to communicate with him, get him up to speed with what you guys are doing? Well, he signed with us. You know, we talk. Um, he, he graduates. He actually texted me today a picture of his um, graduation announcement thing. He's about to graduate in May. He'll walk the stage. I think on his break, he's probably going to come up and watch practice and stuff. But I'm excited about him. You know, he's he's a He's a kid that's raw with a lot of talent. Him and Kwali played against each other, so now they'll be playing with each other. You know, just to be able to get him and learn the offense. You know, he's going to be a little behind. 
because he's not here, but we talk a lot just to make sure he understands he's a part of this. He's not separate. He's he's part of the backfield. You don't see him out there, but you, you he knows he's coming and the players know he's coming. You know, they, they're, they're open to the competition. He's open to the competition. We're excited to have him on our side, and it's my job to get him coached up so he can help us uh, week one against New Mexico. I guess from an outsider's perspective, it's easy to assume that Ja'Cory, Quali, and Speedy are kind of your top three guys, but where are Brandon Johnson and, and Jordan Washington? Where are they at in, in this process? Well, I mean, they're very talented. I mean, anytime you got a 10-2 guy and a, with, with Jordan and a 10-5 guy with Brandon, you know, they're young. You have a true freshman and a redshirt freshman. So you just try to make get them to learn the core of the offense. And then that's another thing I always tell them, how can you affect the game with that type of speed and that talent in the special team space? You know, finding roles for them where they can help us win football games. But also knowing the offense in the event, yeah, you got three guys, but we know the nature of this business. The running back thing can change with one injury. You, They're on the field playing. And with the new rule, you know, you can play them in four games, you know, pick and choose where that is and if knock on wood when you make the bowl game that makes five so there's an opportunity for them to get a lot of experience playing but the biggest thing is making sure they know what they're doing and not overwhelming them too much but I think Brandon is having a real good spring this was Jordan's first day you know coming back and being able to participate and once I watch film with him you'll see more of him as we go in the spring All right, that's our time. Thank you. appreciate y'all all right